Can't hear you. Are you there? Got no sound here. How are you going to ask me questions? <laughs> Well, that would have to be the best start of an interview ever that you've uh, so, you've, you've ever done. Yeah. Notice I've, I've even tidied my room a little bit. See, the main tidy, I just I just chucked an all-black flag over. Oh, you can see all that. You can see all that too. Yeah. Um, but I just chucked an all-black flag over that. That's okay. Um, so you can see all these all these things. Sorry, I just talked about prisons. Shut up. Well, if there's if there's anybody left watching after that, <laughs> shush. Hmm. Tell Spielberg I'm busy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just tell him I'm busy. Exactly. I'll get back to him. I just yeah, put him on hold. Sorry, I'm talking to Stephen. You know Stephen. Sorry, Stephen on the other line. Sorry, That's Stephen. Fine. That's fine. Plus, I had to make myself coffee. Um. So everybody, welcome to this. Is oh, there's my camera there. See, there's my camera. Hey. Uh, yes. Nice. Um. This is an interview series like no other, literally. It's called Actors Talk About Themselves, and because I'm an actor, Jed's an actor. And special guest, Jed Brophy. Yes, hello. I'm a hobbit is my very first guest. Indeed. As you said, we've had a few teething problems, but that's all right. It's all very raw. It's all very real. Um, I was ready. I love I your was, hat. Yeah, no, good. Just, I've just been out uh, rounding up some, some, some... I don't have many fans. I've been rounding them up. I go out on my horse and I round them up and they're here. Shut up. You, you know you love me. <laughs> Get photos later. Sorry about that. I'm warm. Oh, this is my boot. My bought my first flannel. My first, my proper flanny. Ah, oh, it's not the right colour. It should be red. I know. I, I'm going to get a red one, but this is my first one. Um, I just love the blue. It sort of it makes my eyes pop. See, actually, it does. Yeah, it, um, <clears throat> red red suits Dino, but it doesn't really suit other people. It doesn't suit me. I just love. Yeah, a lot of things suit, suit Dino Gorman that don't suit a lot of other people. <clears throat> yeah, so true. You know, like children's clothing. Oh, yeah. sorry, not say that. <laughs> so, so then I get back to him. He's on line three. He's on line three. My secretary. <laughs> She's not very good. No, but just a bit, to, to, but, but you know, to, to be fair and seriously though, he is quite small. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dean. But we love, but we I, love him dearly. I love Dean. Um, yeah. Anyway, this, this is my office. You see, oh, I, yeah. got a, I don't know if you can see over there, but I've got a whole lot of hats. Oh, you on, do on the door. But there you go. See, <laughs> see his hats. Yeah, brilliant. And that's I one. just have one. And that's the Seven. backyard. Yeah. And if you go sort of that way, there's goldfish. There's a whole lot of goldfish. Oh no, you're frozen. Technology is, is the technology is letting us down already. <sighs> well, anyway. Well, Jed's frozen, and we'll, before we get him back, oh, there we go, he's back here now. I was going to do a big spiel, but and I've saved everything uh -huh. from that. Um, yeah, so like, what I want to do with these, because initially it was, yep. uh, I was talking to some people and you know, Twitter followers and Facebook followers as we've got, and um, you know, about what sort of things they want to find out about, and it's already about the same sort of stuff we do when we're you know, out of panel. So I thought, well, why don't you stay in my own room? And not yeah. wear pants. <clears throat> I, I may or may not be wearing pants. And um, I'm not wearing pants. I'm not wearing pants. Nah. Well, yeah. that was the rule. I, I emailed Gray McTavish as well and Adam Brown, and they both said absolutely, definitely no pants. So uh, yeah. Gray actually said naked. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll yeah. see, how, see how that flies. Yeah, he's he's been working out though, and I haven't. So it's okay for him to say that. It's yeah. I know, I know, and and it, but anyway, in anyway, everybody was was keen to find out what we're up to, and you know, like. A lot of people don't get to, to see panels. They don't get to go to the Hobbit Con. Or they don't get to go, which is by is amazing. It's Magic Con now this year, next year, and um, so they don't get to go to those things. And um, I was I was uh, doing some work in Hobart recently, and I went and saw Tamara Crosby, who we know, who yes, looks after a wonderful fan page. Hi Tamara, hi. She's gonna be so excited. She's on this first one. <clears throat> I emailed her today, and um, so I thought, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. And I was meant to—I was meant to interview you when we were at um, Oz Comic Con um, on your bed in your hotel room, but yeah, but we ended up watching that. rugby. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, we ended up watching rugby. That's yeah. right, and it was a great game. Go the Blacks! Go the All Blacks! Exactly. Um, just and, for those, just for those in other countries, the All Blacks are a team. Yeah, they're a rugby team. They are the they're team. The they won. 
they won the Laureus Award for the best team in the world last the best year. Team, the best, and the best coach and the best player. Yeah, Richie McCaw, Sir Richie. Um, Sir Richie. And by the time this goes out to people, um, it's not going to be either today or the next few days. So, But they won't know, or and almost definitely probably don't care, that our two teams play in the Super Rugby semi-final tonight as well. The Chiefs and tonight. the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes. I know, kind of Chiefs. That's cheap too. And go the Chiefs too, because... I don't really care as long as it's two New Zealand teams in the final. Well, That's what I... surely the Highlanders can get over the Lions. Surely. Anyway, wake up, everybody. Sorry, we won't talk about rugby anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no more rugby. It's just that it's a religion. Yes. Um, so, like, initially I, I emailed you guys to see if you'd, if you'd do this little interview because I know people are very interested in, in what we're up to these days and what we're about. And then I interviewed a hot... I emailed a whole lot of other people because I thought... Wouldn't it be interesting to find out not only what it's like to be an actor and to do these amazing jobs, but what's it like being an actor and not acting? What's it like being an actor and, and sort of finishing or being an actor and then having a really bad time or not getting a job? or Because essentially that's what it's like, isn't it? I mean, we've been very lucky. We've been very blessed with the work that we've done with The Hobbit and, you know, to go around to the conventions and go around the world. But, you know, it's, it's such a crazy industry, isn't it? It is. In fact, on that note, I, I had two projects that I should have already started that have both fallen over until next year. Mm. So you do an awful lot of waiting mm. for the people with the money and the people with the projects to finally come to fruition. And mm. no fault for anyone's. You know, there's a lot of reasons why all the money doesn't come through and there's lots of reasons why things don't happen. But it's been one of those years where I've gone, oh, bit of a stink year this year. Has <laughs> The things haven't really worked out, and you, it's a hard thing trying to keep yourself from going stir crazy. Yeah, I've done a lot of renovations around my house, I've done a lot of fence building, I've done a lot of things for free for people. I am doing something for Bruno oh, in Bruno. a couple of weeks. I heard, yeah. a, I heard a story the other day from somebody, and it was it was Dave. Remember Dave, the AD? I do. I, I saw him recently, and he said that I think it might have been Jimmy and Aiden who were in Europe. And they came across a bloke who they thought was Bruno, but apparently Bruno has a twin brother. Oh, really? And they go, Bruno! And he's like, huh? Bruno. No, no, I think he has, first you've got to get the name right. The then Bruno, to... Bruno from Belgium, <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> but he's one of, the, right. one of the most amazing ADs that we had on The Hobbit, and he's just such a wonderful guy. But yeah, he, apparently he's got a twin brother. So these guys came up, and um, Jimmy and Aiden, I think, and came up to him, and obviously he had no idea who he was. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, you said you saw Bruno recently. Yeah, he's doing a short film called Zelandia, and I'm helping to get a group of people together to be cyborgs. Well, I shouldn't give too much away because no one's seen it yet, but mm. yeah, he's making his his short film, and he's got together a really good crew of people and um, getting some help from the wonderful people at Weta Digital and Weta, and so sort of around the 13th to the 15th, we're going to be mm. kicking off on that, but it'll only be like a week's worth of shooting. Yeah, right. A lot of fun, though. So when did you start acting? Like I remember, I met you in nineteen eighty seven or nineteen eighty eight, and you were yes. doing you were doing a show called Ladies Night. And yes. I don't know how old you were then. I was quite young. I was probably about eighteen or nineteen. I was a year out of drama school. <clears throat> right. So I would have been twenty three. Was that your first big gig? Was that, or did, were you doing amateur my, stuff? My first big touring gig. Um, yeah, it was my first big gig. I'd done a sh I'd done the show. Michael Hurst directed it at Centre Point. And then the uh, tour sort of came out of people seeing that production, really. Mm. And we toured for seven and a half months. And yes, I do remember coming to Hamilton. I remember, <laughs> I remember meeting you. And we went and we went to some jazz club. Oh, very possibly. I think we had a jam in the creative room. That's right. We had the jam. radio stations. There's a set of drums there, and a few people got on the guitars. It was pretty horrible. I had a bass guitar, and I, yep. I, had, I had I had a horrible old vocal amp. That you'd have like yeah. at an indoor event of some sort. It was just terrible. Plus, my bass playing was pretty average, I imagine. Um, so much was too. It was just basically white noise. But we had a good time. We did have a good time because I did radio for many, many years, and um, um, yeah, and yeah, you know, I always remember that. And then when the Hobbit jobs came out, I go, I remember, I remember Jed. I remember yeah. Jed. I met him when I worked for Kiwi FM in Hamilton. You know the terrible thing is somewhere there is out there. There's a there's a there's a copy of a video of me stripping for telethon. And they actually, you see everything because they didn't put the lights down. I used to do this thing where I'd put the cricket cap on and then like that, and then I'd throw the cricket cap up as the lights came down, but I didn't put the lights If you'd down. like a link of that video, you could uh, email <laughs> me at info, um, <laughs> info at stephen-hunter.com. Um, you have the video. Yeah, we're trying to get it. 
destroy I, it. I was online somewhere. I remember showing it to somebody, lots of people. Um, and, you, you know, the, there must have been times when, I mean, even after The Hobbit, where there's just nothing happening or you do something and it doesn't go as well as you hoped it was going to go or you have doubt. I mean, self-doubt is like a massive thing in this in this industry, isn't it? I mean, I have it all the time. Yeah. Look, I did this great little short film, this great little film called The Dead Room. And, you know, it's a very low-budget film. The problem with having a low-budget film is you don't have any budget to sell it. Mm. And that is the thing. You know, I want to do films here in New Zealand. That's always been my passion, I think. Mm. Anyone who's born in a country wants to do films in the country that they're born in or in the country that they're living in. And mm. People have said to me, why don't you go to LA? Why don't you go to Hollywood? Well, I don't like the place that much. I like the people there and I like mm. the industry there, but I like it as a place to live. So for me, it's tricky because it's always going to be a step down from big films like The Hobbit working here. We just don't have the budgets to do those kind of urban films. Having said that, I have been incredibly fortunate to have a career and be able to feed my family and house them. So mm. it's all I can imagine doing. I grew up on a farm. You know, I, I didn't imagine that this would be a career that went beyond ladies' night, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, this year's been one of those weird years where there's been a lot of promise. Mm. We're sort of waiting for the, to see when the second season of Shannara is going to shoot. It's mm. definitely going ahead, but what my involvement will be in that, I really don't know. So um, it's a bit of a waiting game, really. Mm. That's been very popular, isn't it? Amazing show. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I imagine it's amazing. <laughs> it's not amazing, isn't it, too? No, um, again, it was a five-hour makeup, and I did. I was a bit reticent to doing it, having just done that on the Hobbit for so many years. But um, mm. if the only jobs I can get is by covering my face, I'll take them. Yeah, that tended to be the way I thought I was going to go. But the the, the the thing for me about what people probably don't realise is that you do a massive job like The Hobbit, a huge movie, and then you're up at this level because we were we were treated really really well, and it was just it was just an incredible experience. And I think we were very lucky talking to some people who did some big movies after that. We were in Wellington and looked over, looked after so well by Pete and Fran and, you know, yeah. but they think you get to that level and then you stay there and you just don't. <laughs> it just, no, it just no. all goes under your feet. It's, it's uh, yeah. I've got a mate yeah. that's just come back from New York for a month with his family and he goes, bang, what a come down. And, you know, and I felt like that year and a half was like that for us. And, you know, yeah. people see us and they see us at the shows and online and stuff and they think it goes on this trajectory and just keeps going and it just, it doesn't, and it just, it just, yeah. it changes. It's not bad. It's, I think my life's better for it now, but it just changes. And, you know, as you say, I mean, not going to LA and, um, you know, you're a bit like me, like I, that, that's not my home. My home's, you know, my home's New Zealand, but my home really now is, is Sydney. And, and if I could work here as much as possible with my family around, it um, makes all the difference. But, but yeah, how, how did you find that, that change from the big highs of the, of the premiers that's and all that? It was really hard. It was the same, like I was lucky enough to work on the Rings films and I thought we'd never get to do anything that big again. Mm. But I wasn't as involved at the level that we were at at The Hobbit. You know, we were cool cast in The Hobbit. We got to hang out with the cool people every day. And they were really cool people. And you do, you kind of wish it would never end. Someone said to me, if you had to do it all again tomorrow, would you? And I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, because to work at that level continuously, not just with the actors, but Peter is such a genius filmmaker and he's surrounded by other geniuses. Yeah. When you're working with people at that level, it is easy to believe that that will be the rest of your life. It's all going to be like that. But it's not like that for anyone. No. Um, unless you're an A-lister and you're doing two or three of those Uber films a year or you're one of the Marvel franchise where you know that your character is, oh, unless Marvel. it's good, will go on forever. Mm. It's not, that's not really the reality for acting. Yeah. Um, not, not in our two countries anyway. Yeah, it's. I've only just realised over the last little while. I've I've got a, a very good friend of mine who's a graphic artist. He's actually done some work for Weta, and you know he's like a sort of mentor, you know, coach for me. And he he just said to me, like, "You've just got to do your art every day. You've got to." And I think that's that's the the big bit of advice that I'd give people. Besides being persistent, if it's what you want, but I'm just really enjoying, and that's what I guess spurred me to do these video blogs and I'm gonna do a podcast and do some more writing. It's just the love of doing it rather than doing yeah. it to get anywhere and and once I get it out of my system every day I feel fulfilled and it's it's sort of taken me this long because you get caught up in the whole where you need to go and what jobs you're going to do and how much you're going to make and stuff and you know it's um it's quite refreshing to have that uh 
yeah, that realization. I was like, oh, wow, I just really love doing this. So I'll just do anything, you know, even taking photos yeah. or, you know, posting something funny or, well, I think it's funny, you know, it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with this in your blood, it's really hard to let it go, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Mm. And if another film of the size and the brilliance of The Hobbit never comes along, at least we've had that, you know. A lot of actors <clears throat> that I work work in theatre, and they never get the chance to aspire to those big heights. They never get to play to an audience mm. of more than 100 people. And they're really good actors, but for whatever reason, how they look or luck mm. or don't have the right agent or the right job doesn't come along or they're not available. Mm. There's all sorts of things that we have no control of as actors. Mm. Uh, um, I was overseas at one point when there's some really good auditions for a thing happening here and I'm like, well, I can't get back there in time. I don't have time to put it down on tape. You just go, oh, well, yeah. that's, that's an opportunity lost. But you can't live, as you say, every day going, <clears throat> damn if only. I wouldn't get out of bed if it was like that. Yeah, I, I remember having a um, a particularly bad recall for a job a couple of years ago. And, you know, without going into too much, it was around the time when my dad was quite ill. And and I think I was just worked up more than I thought I was, and it really caught me. And a very good, you know, he's become a, you know, a good mate of mine, though I don't see him that often, Craig Hall. He said to me, he goes, you know, he said, my mum always said, you know, what's for you won't go past you. Yeah. And I always remember that. And literally... A year later, um, I got this great role on a sh show over here called Janet King, and yeah. that was that was the role that I was probably meant to do the year before, but it wasn't yeah. the right time because if I was doing it, I wouldn't have got to spend all that time with with Dad at the end. And you know, it was yeah. it was like that's yeah, it, it it made me it's it sort of gave me a bit of freedom around it. Yeah, um, and also you know having an agent that goes, oh look, there's you know the, the amount of conversations I've had with people who have come out of a you know, an audition and gone, oh no, you know, <laughs> you know, really high level people. So it's, it's a hard thing to say, look, that's just part of the job, but it is part of the job sometimes, isn't it? That, you know, you'll yep. do a good job and sometimes you won't, you won't, you can't be on all the time, you know, it's kind yeah. of. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I sometimes go and help Miranda Harcourt and I talk to these young people that she's um, working with at a thing called the Rata Studio at, at um, Scott's College. And I said, the one thing that you, you have to get used to that no one will train you as rejection yeah. and not yeah, personally. You're just not right sometimes. You know, the director and the writer, the producer have in their mind quite a lot of the time the type of person that they're looking for. And it doesn't matter how good an actor you are. If you're not right mm. and what they perceive, you're just not right. And you <clears> doesn't matter what your agent pushes or your manager pushes or you push. Sometimes it's just not meant to be, you know. I mean, you and I have talked about how lucky we felt being in The Hobbit, and there was a lot of luck involved, man. Mm. <laughs> they could have cast anyone in the world, but they happened to cast two people that they really wanted. And it's disappointing for all the other people that auditioned for Nori and for Bomba. Mm. You know, and it's not to say that we'll... Jed's just having a momentary lapse of, um, of movement. Um, just to remind you, too, I'm doing another... Uh, another um, uh, video blog every week. I'm not too sure exactly which day I'm going to release it, but it's just going to be me um, talking about stuff, answering your questions. It'll be a bit shorter than these. Um, and sort of hopefully every month I'll have these interviews, um, which are going to be called Actors Talk About Themselves. I've also got um, some... Oh, there we go. Sorry. <clears throat> I was just I was just uh, segueing. I was filling in my old radio days. Yeah. You were very good. Yeah. Thanks. What you said was fantastic. And you know, it came back just as you had your finger up your nose. I did that on purpose. I thought it would happen at some appropriate time. Lucky I wasn't standing up because otherwise... With the no pants too, thing. With the no pants thing, yeah. It's actually a bit chilly in here. <laughs> don't, don't, don't need to know. <laughs> so what were we talking about? We are talking about, like, oh, you were talking to the, the kids. Luck. Mm. And, yeah, I mean... If nothing else happens this year, mm -hmm. at least I've got to spend a bit more time with my horse. Mm. I've been, been training him to ride without a bit in his mouth, so riding him in a, in a what they call a hackamore, which is a puts pressure on the nose but no bit in the mouth. And, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, and also spend more time with my two boys. You know, it's like you never stop being a dad. Yeah. And my boys, although they're yeah, fairly well actualized in terms of what they want, to do, there's still a lot of disappointment for young people, and actually, it's been great for me as a dad to be around all of this year. And also, my good wife puts up with me being away a lot. And mm. one of the things about being here is we've had an entire year where I've pretty much been in the country, apart from the occasional convention. Mm. Yeah. So that's been that point of view. 
Yeah, because it's, it's like anything. Like if you get m good rewards, or you know, like I had arguments a long time ago when I was a copywriter and people were moaning about the managers getting paid X amount. I'm like, have you ever been a manager? Have you ever been in that position? Because I have. And they go, oh no. I said, well, <clears throat> if you get the reward, there's a cost to it. And the cost, yeah. the cost when you're in high management is the stress and the hours. And as an actor, you know, there's good rewards, but the cost is that you're away a lot. And, you know, I mean, we know some people who are away from their families for, for an, an awful long time. And it's, you know, I, I go away for two weeks and, you know, and then it takes a while for my daughter to <laughs> almost forgive me for being away. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's uh, you do, you, you miss out on those things. And we yeah, make it work because it's what I love to do. And it's what, as a family, we've decided that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, you know, and and you do make it work, and if you're committed to doing it, then it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, but yeah, there is a there is a cost to it sometimes. There is a cost. You know, one of the great things, one of the greatest things about doing this job is the friendships that be forged. Hmm. It's a it's a core cool bunch of people that it doesn't matter where in the world and how long it was in between. If we see each other again, we have that kind of shared memory of what 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 it was we went through. It was a bit like going to war. Hmm. You know, I talked to. Um, Except the catering was better. Except the catering was much better. No one was. And no one got killed. <laughs> no one got killed. Well, it was nothing like war at all, folks. It was really, it was really very nice. But in terms of the camaraderie, yes, in terms yes. of the camaraderie, um, yeah. that, that's the single most positive thing I can take away from the experience, apart from all the junkets and getting all the air miles, which was amazing. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm still the living on my Qantas uh, gold membership, so uh, and my Air New Zealand was gold for a long time. And so, yes, yeah. thanks, guys. Point of view, it's great, yeah. And, and just kind of being able to do something amazing for this country as well in terms of what the Hobbit's done for tourism, it's been incredible. And it's always nice to feel like you've done more than just make a film. It's actually something that lends itself to something else. Not just the amazing fan base that we have, but also just what it's done for the fabric of this country, which is so much about primary industry. Mm. The film industry is now the third biggest kind of earner in this country, which is an amazing thing. And not all of it's just pure entertainment. There's some amazing films have come out, you know, around about the same time as The Hobbit. And we've seen a lot of our contemporaries kind of go like that as well. Mm. Great thing about this country is this country will make you keep your feet on the ground. Because people will say, hey, mm. yeah, you did that thing one time, buddy, but you're still just a Kiwi. Speaking <laughs> of which, we, I, I can't leave this subject without mentioning um, Tiger's new movie, Hunt for the Wolf. Oh, yeah. well, how good was that? It's, it's one of the few movies I would see three or four times on end. Well, I, I went with a few Kiwis because it was a mate of mine, he's, he's he, a Kiwi who just lives up the road, and his wife went to see it with their daughter, and obviously they're yeah. both Kiwis. And then I said, oh, do you want to go along? I'm going to take my brother-in-law, who wasn't a Kiwi. So he came along, and he was the only non-Kiwi in the whole group. And and then my other friend's wife, she came along to see it again. And like, as someone who doesn't know New Zealand culture, it's still an amazing movie. But there's so many little in jokes. There's so there's there's so <laughs> much funny stuff. Like all the you know all the Toyota references and Scott, you know all that yeah. sort of stuff were, were were just incredible. And it was such a funny movie. And and to be honest, I think I don't know whether it was done on purpose, but I think the director himself might have stolen the <laughs> stolen the movie once. <laughs> so um, you know, yeah. it was just hilarious. It was such a such a a really um, Interesting, and it was quite funny because all the scenery um, and a lot of the locations where they shot it almost reminded me a little bit. Obviously, it was a totally different style, a little bit of um, of Sleeping Dogs, you know, like yeah. of, of where they were where they were shooting. So that must have been a bit of a throwback for Sam Neill. Yeah, and and you know, it's I without without taking away from anything else Sam's done, I think it's one of his best ever performances. I was just blown away by him. Yeah. Having grown up in the country with, with a bunch of crotchety old people, he was really, <laughs> was really amazing. I mean, he was just like people who lived in, in Matara and Tai Happy and up in the bush. He was he was like everything that Barry Crump ever wrote about. It yeah. was kind of fantastic. And that young boy, Julian Dennison, wow, what an amazing young man he is. And, yeah. and so grounded as well. And, in terms of always thanking the other people, it's never about him, yeah. you know. And and seeing Cohen Holloway there, and and seeing um, and Mike there, and all and Reese Darby, fantastic actors. Reece, Reece, Reece Reece is just, I, I did a commercial with Reese like years and years ago. Where I think even before his stand up got you know really uh, really well known. He's he's a he's a really lovely guy, but he's 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 mad as a mad as a snake. Absolutely mad as a snake. Yeah. Um, and it made me smile because I've seen lots of posts and lots of social media stuff with Julian, and I, I've never met Julian. I, I don't know him, but I'm just. I, it makes me smile to think of that 
after what we did, just that, that journey that he's on, that the, the excitement of going to those premieres and going around the world and being, you know, it is an exciting time and, and yeah. I, and I hope and I trust and I'm sure that it will happen that he'll, he'll have people around him. who will be able to, you know, just keep him, keep him going to, for the next thing. And he, he's yeah, such a talent. Yeah, he is. But he's also, he's also one of those lovely young people that doesn't rate himself overly. Yeah. He, he knows it's a great film, but it's all about the film. You know, he's always promoting the film rather than promoting himself. It's such a Kiwi thing, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, don't talk about me, talk about the work. I mean, because I know living in Sydney and people say, oh, the tall poppy syndrome in Australia, you know, it's, I said, well, you haven't lived in New Zealand. I remember my, <laughs> my dear old dad and I, I loved him so much, but I remember he had this thing about John Walker. And he thought he was a bit of a show off, and I'm like, Dad, he's he's the Olympic medalist, he's the world record holder, he is the best in the world. But he thought he was a bit of a smartass because he he rated himself, and that was that was just that was just the 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 opinion of the time, you know. And yeah. um, it always made me smile thinking about that when he used to, you know. And I remember he did a fresh up commercial. Remember he did yeah. some fresh up commercials yeah. back in the day, yeah. and I rem- I've only just remembered this now. And I remember going to Pirate Stadium. They used to have those international track series, you know, yeah. back where athletics was really a popular TV sport as well. And I remember yeah. running after him. He was running there, and I went up to him <laughs> and I offered him a drink of my fresh up, and he didn't take it. I just, re- I just, re- I haven't thought thought of that for like twenty years. I've just thought of that now. Yeah. Uh, people, people chucked off at him. We we love to put our people up there and then cut them down to size. Boom! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? So what's next now? What, what are you up to next? I, I, I'm doing this on, on the somewhere between the 13th and the 15th. We start on uh, this film for Bruno called Zelandia. Yeah, and then there's a few things that are shooting. I think word is that Shannara might be back here as early as as September. I know they've started writing the second series. I've, I've um, had a little bit of contact with the writers on Twitter just saying, I think that Dagda Moore should be bigger, a bigger part, much bigger head, bigger arms, bigger everything, but they haven't got back to me. Bigger, so bigger salaries. salaries. <laughs> a bigger salary, yeah. yeah. So I'm just interested to see what they do with it um, uh, and what my involvement will be. I don't really know. And almost like, I'm also going through the process of doing my O1 visa, although I've kind of put that on hold because you have to live in America for six months. Yeah. Just see what happens with the elections there before I take my stuff over there. Yeah. Try not really to be don't. political, but oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, we have talked about the possibility, my auntie and I will live in Vancouver Island in Vancouver, and we have talked about the possibility of going there for a year and air being a being house up. Yeah. But I just went through to the end of this year and, and, uh, I'm, tr- I'm working on uh, turning a theatre show called The Unseasonable Fall of Snow into a film with Bernard Hill. Oh, wow. He's writing it with the idea of directing it. and he's, we've, we've got a draft. Um, it's, it's a hard show to sell because of the subject matter. It's a tricky yeah, right. show to sell. Yeah, wow. The subject matter. So it's, um, it's a dark little story, and it's, hard, it's going to be a hard show to get money for. Um, Got, got a few producers interested in terms of helping us out. It's just we're both newbies. I've never produced anything before. Ben has not written anything <clears> before. There's a lot to be learnt um, about how hard it is to make a film. I'd never realised how difficult it is to get people interested. You always sort of, as an actor, you're always the last people to be contacted just when they're casting it. But to get it to that point is really, really difficult. Mm. Yeah. So it's a learning curve for me. Um, I'm, I'm very unsuited. It's interesting you say because I went to a meeting the other day and they were talking about this whole realm of not film distribution, but like there was a lot of um, independent films that you know they picked up a distributor and you know they went through the process and then if they get made, if for any reason the distributor doesn't want to wasn't doesn't want to promote it, they just kill the film. And there was this guy there who's um, you know from Filmwork magazine um, and Dove and and he's incredible and what he does to a lot of these films he'll do these premiere screenings and he'll do one in one city and he's looking at doing them in other cities and just trying to give them some sort of life and and it's it's funny because in this in this world of like just unlimited content and people basically pay for what they they really want um, the whole distribution and you know the fact of you know like if you get a film funded by any film commission i don't know what it's like in new zealand but in australia i think it's like if you get uh, screen australia funding you can't release it digitally for 90 days uh, and it's got to have a theatrical release so it's it's quite antiquated the way that you know and then you're relying on other people you're relying on like you know uh, you know sort of screen bodies or you know to to tell you if your film's good enough to get funding and it's it's really 
in the days where we just produce stuff and release it, it is quite an old system. And I'm, I'm wondering if there's a bit of a shift with that. Because I, is, I, I believe there should be somewhere where you can, if you think something's good and you want to do it, you do it. And then you let the market decide, you know. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that um, Peter Jackson and various other people are talking about is having <clears throat> it, rele it released digitally at the same time as it's released at the movies yeah. um, so that you can actually watch it in your home. And you might pay a bit more for that, but for people who don't have the kind of budget for a studio behind them mm. to do all the publicity, it's really hard when you're competing with um, cinema time with other people. You know, we yeah. found this, um, Jason Stutter found this with the dead room, just trying to get people to actually come along and see it was really, really difficult. It's not a bad film. It's, you know, it's not a big budget film, but unfortunately you have to have a third as much as what it took you to, to make it, again, in reserve to actually sell it. Yeah. Getting to, the, the, the trick is to get into a festival. Hmm. If it gets into a festival and people see it, then that's where the market happens and people might buy it. But even then, you know, even if it sells to certain territories, they might never play it. Hmm. It's, it's a tricky thing. For for me, the tricky thing is finding the right producer for this for this film. Someone who feels as passionate as Bernard and I. Yeah. Did. Um, Bernard, both Bernard and Billy Boyd came and saw it, and they both said, "Wow, it'd be a great film." That's enough to say that. But taking it, taking a play and turning it into a film and getting people to watch it, well, and funding it, and funding it—that's a tricky thing. You got to get a producer that is as passionate as you are, who gets why you're trying to do it. You know, we want to do it because. But the subject matter and the fact that there are a lot of young people in this country that are just not coping. And the play started a conversation for young people going, yeah, that's me. That's that's why, that's where I fit in. I don't quite fit into the groove. I'm not quite in that clique. And it can be quite depressing for young people. And so we want to start a conversation. But getting other people to start that conversation is tricky. Mm. It's like, um, you know, making Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit in terms of a, a fan base isn't hard, it's already there. Mm. There's already fans of the literature, there's fans of the world, the fantasy world. Mm. Fantasy is a kind of an easier thing to sell these days than it was back then. Yeah. Fantasy fantasy is everywhere now. To come back to making a film that's purely a narrative, that's about two people and stuff that's happening for them, that's a difficult sell these days. Mm. Wow. If it's not comedy, and it's not a comedy. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so, I mean, I imagine there'd be a lot of people watching this who you know, they, they're excited by the idea of film or the idea of, you know, for want of a better word, being a star or whatever. But if they're really interested in making stuff and being an actor, what's what's your what would be your words of advice? My words of advice is to buy, borrow, steal a camera and get together with a group of people that you like working with who have a similar passion and just start making stuff. Mm. So I think the, the only thing that holds you up is the will to do it. You know, and if you're waiting by the phone for someone else to give you permission to make stuff, you'll never do it. Mm. And if, if that means that you get involved in drama at school, um, but you've got to find people you want to work with, and you know this yourself. You find people that you like to work with, and, and, and you have done more than I have in terms of making your own stuff. Just get out there and do it. Mm. That's a lovely shot of Jed. I love that. That could be, um, that could be his new headshot. Um, so Jed Brophy, um, we'll probably wrap it up very shortly, but um, yeah, keep listening because we're going to uh, we're going to have some more of these interviews. Actors talk about themselves, um, and I'm going to have my own podcasts. And what we'd ask you is to you know write in your questions um, just online. Um, you know if you've got any ideas. Oh, well, I don't know what happened there. Well, I think Steve Irving's but he's been trying to get hold of me all morning. He might have just cut the connection. Who's that, Steven Spielberg? That? Yeah, he's been trying to get hold of me all morning. JJ. Yeah, I'm trying to just, you know, trying to keep him at arm's length. He's just so many parts, so little time. I know, I know. Um, so little interest of, of us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, because now, we we're talking about, uh, yeah, like making your own stuff, basically. That's what we we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And look, I, I, I think a lot of it is... Your you know, time speech is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the beep. Who? No, I'm already here. Yeah, Don't. How do we get... Oh, sorry, that's... that's yeah. Hi, Stephen. Hi. Remember? Hi. I'm Stephen yeah. Hunter, Bomber. Remember, remember Pete sent you the video of me um, in that cold water? And, no? You don't? No? He did tell me if he couldn't get hold of me, he was going to try and run you. So oh, my phone's on. Well, they've got really bad cell phone coverage here. Um, right. Yeah, I, I, I think um, I think there's a 
misconception. And this is something that I'm really glad I've gone through now that, you know, the, the glamour of our industry. And it can be it can be glamorous. I mean, there's yeah. no doubting that first tour that we did where we went to, I mean, that wonderful 600-meter red carpet in Wellington. And that was, to me, the best premiere. It was just so, yeah. so special. And then New York, which was just mad. Yeah. Um, and then London, I mean, meeting the just, Prince and all the hoo-ha. Yeah, just staying at Claridge's, which, you know, I walk past there occasionally now when I'm in London going, well, we stayed there. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, wearing a T-shirt. Just, what, wasn't it meant to be collar, um, collar and tie for lunch? Yeah. There's all the Kiwis lining up for the, for the you know, yeah. and it's like it, there is that side of things. But I, I think the, the thing that I learned is that that's not the core of the industry. That's that's like a that's an added little bonus, a little cherry on top that sometimes if you're lucky you get. And but yeah. the core of it is is creating and is is like expressing yourself. And a very good friend of mine, a guy called Jeff Bolo, he's got this amazing screenwriting um, program called Fast Screenplay. And yeah, and um, <clears throat> he did a TED talk and he said, look, when it comes to creativity, because I was thought, oh, my idea's been done. He said, look, you are original. Nobody has experienced what you've experienced the way you've experienced. Your ideas are purely original because it's it's your experiences, and that just that just really gave me something, you know. And just being able to create stuff, and if you really enjoy doing it, then you may get some of those rewards. But if you do it purely for the fame or the fortune, you're going to be sorely, you know, like you might get some, but then you've got to go back and graft. I mean, I've had to come back to Australia, and you know, um, my um, wonderful agent David has said many times, he said, Well, you know, The Hobbit was really great for you, but you know, also. I was in prosthetics. No one could really see my face. I didn't really say anything. So, you know, that was never going to, I was never going to get cast directly off that. But what it has done, it's opened a lot of doors. But I've had to work harder, if anything, because now I'm getting, I'm being put up for bigger roles than I was before I did The Hobbit. But I still have to work as hard. And it's like, I went from there to there, and now I have to sort of fill in here, you know? And that's what's yeah. happening. And it takes yeah, a lot no. of work, and it's a lot of, you know, it's you just have yeah. to, you have to really, really love it. That's the one thing that no one teaches you in this industry is what to do in the meantime, how to yeah. keep yourself from going crazy and how to not overthink it. Yeah. Because there is that thing, you know, you and I have talked about this as going, okay, we've done the Hobbit. What's the next big thing? Yeah. That's how you're thinking. The next red carpet, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to happen yeah. because you carry that with you. You have to be, you have to be aware of the fact that the industry is not kind. Yeah. The industry is a business. And it's a business of making money. We're a and commodity, basically. We're a commodity, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, I've also learned to use the business as well. You know, now with social media and, you know, fan base and all sorts of things, it's 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 really about, and again, that's why this, this came up. It's like, what do the, there's all these people following me and then they, they actually want, they want to be fed. They, they want information. They want content. And so what is it that I can do to try and, you know, try and satisfy their need for content. And if they don't get it from me, they'll get it from somebody else, you know? So, yeah. you know, it's... It works, no one else is going to do interviews with people without their pants. It's just not going to happen. I know, exactly. And like, you know, the all the technical... I mean, that was all planned, all the technical yeah, things. Absolutely. At one stage, I was going to go make some toast, but I didn't. I sort of didn't get around to that. Um, and, you know, who knows? One time I'll do an interview and I'll actually tidy my office. Um, you know, it might it might sort of take <laughs> might sort of take the gloss of it. And um, what when are you you got any plans to see any of the other lads? Um, I'm I'm going to go to um, the UK in November. Yeah. Um, so and, and possibly Paris. So if I'm there and, and Adam Brown's around, I'll definitely go and see him. Oh, Adam, it'd be great to see him. Um, you see Dan, so, our friend Dan Freeman. Yeah, I'll go and see Dan Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. See, they're they're up to they're up to episode seven. Yeah. Which episode did you do? Five. Right, yeah. Yeah. So they're going gangbusters and you know, he's got every he's got every um will in the world to make uh the Minister of Chance into a movie, but he's finding that really difficult too. Just because yeah. he had people in it and was a good podcast doesn't necessarily mean that he's gonna get the money to make them into a movie. Money. Money to make money, man, it's about the money. I mean it'll be interesting to see what the UK is like now after Brexit. Yeah. Had a few friends um, come home. Had a few friends come home from Paris um, recently as well. And you know, Europe is definitely a changing place, and, and Britain is changing too. So, yeah. be interested. I meant to do a TV show there next year um, called Robin Hood, with a Kiwi actress playing Robin. Oh. And I'm sure I'm not sure how the whole Brexit thing will will um, offer visas. You mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, it'll be really interesting. I mean, I, I get patriality, so my granddad. But it's going to take a couple of years to for is it to all to be finalised, and but absolutely. But uh, yeah. but like, and also like the, all the, the the main people that have were behind it all have all gone. So they've like, they've made this decision, and then they've all buggered off and left it to everyone else to clean up. Yeah, so it might not even get passed because it's got to get approved by someone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think I think it'll be interesting to see how it affects the British film industry, and because you know they've always had. It's been really, it's been easier with the European Union there in terms of getting a market. Mm. I don't, it doesn't make any difference. It might make a difference in terms of doing co-productions, but we don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping that that series happens because it's a good part to get to play the evil King John, which would be fabulous. Nice. You know, if I had a dollar for every part I've been promised, I'd be a very wealthy man. Yes. You well, just, I remember oh, the, best, the, best, the best advice I had from was from member uh, Billy Connolly. Um, lovely man who we did get to spend a bit of time with and you know yeah. he said i think you know when he moved to hollywood he said he said it's mostly bullshit but if you know then it's you know people are going to say things to you and because that's that's the core of, of the industry over there and you know you just don't believe it all you say just just take it as with a grain of salt and yeah. um and he loved it because he knew yeah. that unless it's contract signed then it's done once they're ro once they're rolling on you once you're on set rolling on you, you've got the part. Yeah. Then it might not even end up in the film. So once you're at the premiere and you see yourself up on screen, you've got the part. Exactly. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember the very first day on set, we were there, all of us in Bag End. Remember that? <clears throat> yeah. And um, in walks Ian McCallum. And, uh, and I turned to Adam, and me and Adam were both the same, going, oh, my God. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we're just waiting for them to tap us on the shoulder and say they've made a mistake. It's actually the other Adam Brown and Stephen Hunter because there's about like 20 Stephen Hunters and about 30 Adam Browns. So we, we thought maybe they made a some sort of mistake, um, but uh, but but no. And uh, it's uh, just to finish off because I know that you were uh, you were mentioning about hanging out with all the cool people. You know, we got to hang out with the cool people. But in my mind, I mean, you know, sure, I was it was lovely hanging out with Ian McKellen and Martin Freeman and, and all these guys, you know, Luke Evans, who, you know, it's just a great bunch of guys. But, you know, we, we got to spend the most of the time we've spent together on that show was was all the dwarves, you know, like all, all the Kiwi guys, you know, guys like Jimmy and Graham as well. And, you know, there was, it was, it was it's those guys I, I keep in contact with more, you know. And, yeah. We were the yeah. cool guys, man. We were the cool guys. We were. We were, <laughs> we were the hard workers. It was. I mean, it was a joy for me coming to work every day. Yeah, it's not often that you you work on something that has so much heart and goodwill. Yeah. yeah. You know, I take that away from it. Yeah, there were hard days, but we got each other through. Yeah. You know, days where we were going, you'd be okay, mate. And just come on, one more take, one more take, and that that's the kind of thing that makes makes a project great. Yeah. Not not the end result, not the red carpet, not that stuff. It's actually turning up every day and going. Shit, this is good fun, isn't it? Yeah, it was. And, and the catering, because that was pretty amazing. Bloody catering was incredible. <laughs> I'd marry those people if I wasn't. I, fair enough, I know I'm already married. You know. <laughs> okay, my friend, thank you very okay. much for being my very first guest. No worries. Okay. I'm going to go put my pants on and get out until the day.